humanity would significantly benefit from a TV channel that only airs good news. It's generally accepted that people's political and social views can be heavily swayed by what media they take in, and from where it came from. The problem is misinformed people being fed news from Facebook, Instagram, or the constantly running biased news channel. I hate to break it to you, but wherever you lie on the political spectrum, whatever opinions you think are your own, people are being paid for you to think that. American news outlets constantly use language to portray any scenario in any different light. If the media outlets are that contradictory on the exact same topic or event, none can be trusted. This is becoming common knowledge, and the people's response is that all the news is that it's all bad news. Why not just make a news outlet that only airs good news? Now I know what you're thinking. What's good news to one is bad news to another. No, no, no. I mean actual good news around the world that in many cases would inherently be non-political. You know the kind I'm referring to that local news airs once per night and the waxy newscasters laugh through their Botox. Firefighter saves a kid and marries his mom or whatever. Woo poor kid gets a scholarship. Family of ducks saved by Mexicans. Hippie takes dog on road trip. I got tired. The thing is that is just as fake as a news channel that only shows bad news. The problem is so much news is not actually news. It's an opinion or a fluff piece. News, is not really news. I understand where you're coming from, but I think it's kind of relevant, for this topic at least and also in regards to the SGN segment John Krasinski started on YouTube that others have mentioned, that we consider the definition of what is and is not news. There's absolutely a general understanding, defined sense of what mainstream news is and should be, i.e. reporting on major stories that will affect the masses, but at its core, and to use the definition I googled, news is defined as, newly received or noteworthy information, especially about recent or important events. So, based on that alone, it just comes down to the reporting of facts that are relevant to the listener. The spin or bias that comes with the reporting is a factor that is somewhat independent. Those are opinions, which can't be fake by definition, and the stories, as long as the facts are accurately stated, are also not fake. But if you find them relevant by your own personal stance, then it is news, side note, didn't want to emphasize, is, so much but I'm on mobile and didn't feel like looking up how to italicize Reddit text, so, with that said, I'm of the belief that this kind of news channel would be just as valid in its own way for those who choose to consume it. But also that's my opinion and yours may differ, which is cool too. Either way, I appreciate the discussion and hope you and your loved ones stay happy, healthy, and safe. If that's your only news source, yes. It's not good for that. But it would be good for people who are depressed, especially with how many major historical events are going on, to be able to watch something that gives them hope and shows that there is progress being made and good out there in the world. I definitely do not think people should tune out regular news completely, but some people need breaks, and a source of hope. Particularly those with mental illnesses. This. The problem with our world isn't that we focus too much on problems that we can and should fix, the issue is that for every news item about ocean water acidification there's three articles about how Donald Trump isn't as rich as he said he was. For every article about getting rid of money in politics, there's 20 about how owned a politician is by some celebrity's tweet. If people were watching news all the time telling us that, actually, everything is great, I would argue that's not a good thing for society. It's less positive versus negative and more meaningful or impactful versus vacuous or trivial. I mean, a good idea but I don't see how it would help. Bad things still happen and people need to be informed, so they will still watch, normal, news. Plus, for how long can you see wholesome news until you get bored by it? There's a reason why media outlets focus on bad things, people are just more interested in them. What is the logic behind the need to know everything bad that happened yesterday? This is a fairly recent invention in human history and I don't see how this ever became important. It is tragic that someone died yesterday in a car crash, but I don't see why it's important that everyone finds out about it. What is the benefit of knowing about everyone who got murdered yesterday? There are of course things that will affect us and it is beneficial to be warned about it, but my life isn't any better because I found out a baby drowned in a pool last night. News is supposed to just inform people of what is going on. 
Real news is supposed to be objective, neutral, and just deliver information to the public. It's not supposed to care about your feelings, it's not supposed to tell you how to think. It's a service to the public. In the 70s, the U.S. lost the Vietnam War which pissed off the military-industrial complex. They spent a bunch of time trying to figure out how to control the media and the public and eventually teamed up with the corporate media giants who took over the journalism industry and shifted it to being highly partisan and controlled. Journalism nowadays is pretty much a giant multinational propaganda arm for Western industrialists. They put Trump in as a distraction to their 20-year war on terror and this crap is the end result. Good read lol. Something about the 70s really fucked things up, it's like the most desperate assholes in society finally figured out the fulcrums of power and targeted them. I'm very curious about how the transition happened, I think there was more of a noble valued, goodwill, operating at the near top of governments beforehand, but it seems like the 70s the rats came in and just started looting everything and they slowly but persistently create changes benefiting them and ignoring the rest of society. I think it'd actually be a detriment. Just another avenue to run away from life's problems. Like some dystopian world where you can take a pill to be part of the happy few every single day. Ignore the ugly truth, embrace the pretty lie. If you do it with quality and truth then it's not that bad. It's really not a terrible world out there. There are people who become successful via building bonds with others and bringing their ideas to life. We're just surrounded by terrible messages, but just thinking now like I'd do a story about all the cool hiking spots to check out during COVID, some interview with a recent small business owner, actually I know a small business owner who started 20 years ago, could ask him into what practical things he can say that can relate to people with goals like that. What else I mean there's cultural stories you can do, stories with a negative twist that are ultimately helpful and inspiring to hear, like someone getting out of an abusive relationship and what it took to do so. This is just some poor spitballing but I'm sure high quality people getting some cash out of it can find a lot of things to report about that can give both practical value to people's lives about what is possible and give some inspiration too. I agree though that there is a risk that it becomes a fake positive news thing, I think the onus can be less on it being only positive and more of it offering people practical lessons and approaches and opening them up to perspectives that highlight the success behind perseverance and believing in oneself and even little things like building boundaries with unhealthy people or spotting abuse in a relationship. The news today just sensationalizes things, doesn't give any realistic info about approaching relationships or things in life, just this little drama acting out that we barely participate in. Make it relatable, helpful, and focus on the high-frequency people who can get things done and do it without being an asshole about it. I'm still in school and in one of our English courses were taught different forms of writing. There are distinct differences between article and report writing. Report is supposed to have a neutral tone and you can't give a hint of bias. Articles are different, you're allowed to voice your opinion and use language that can sway your reader in a particular direction. I feel we're swaying too much towards article writing, when we should be staying with report writing as that allows people to form their own opinions, rather than blindly following the opinions portrayed by whoever they choose to follow. One of the challenges in my opinion is in differentiating between good news and perseverance porn. I remember seeing an article once where a school district's teachers all pooled their sick days and donated them to one teacher who was undergoing chemo and radiation therapy and how heartwarming it was. And all I could think about it was how dystopian America has become that a person undergoing a life-saving procedure was at the risk of being fired and thereby losing his medical coverage for having a life-threatening disease. Look at all these people who sacrificed so a person wouldn't have to choose between dying of cancer quicker or more slowly. But that was, good news. That won't make enough money to support itself because not enough people will watch it. Every time a local news channel adds more, good news, their ratings drop. Those fluff stories are usually kickers at the end of the show to soften you following the hard news about the world. Surveyed viewers say they are most interested in crime stories in their community. By good news, I hope you mean something more educational. For that I recommend PBS and NPR. The issue is that people who study people manage to figure out, thanks to the internet, that pissing people off gets the strongest reaction out of them. This is why clickbait became a thing. 
people studied the patterns and realized that outrage was the number one thing that gets your attention. This then led to an arms race where everybody was trying to be the most outrageous and apocalyptic in their coverage. Even the tiniest thing would be blown up into some kind of world-ending catastrophe. News used to have mixed coverage that wasn't all blood and death all the time. Yeah they'd cover it when bad shit happened but they'd also do those little, hey look at this 300 pound pumpkin this cute kid grew in the backyard totally accidentally, stories. That or just have somebody from the nearest zoo show off animals for 10 minutes every now and again. Okay but think of a news station as if it were a person. In a way, we develop a relationship with a news station, our instinctual bonding practices still would occur in a way. So think of a dramatic person in your life who blows up every little thing. Maybe they're doing okay in the social sphere in high school when there's not more real shit to focus on, but eventually those people are exhausting to be around and I personally stay the hell away. But, they're a lot easier to get to know. They're not as quiet, they have conversations to talk about all the time, it's easy to start an acquaintance or friendship with them, if the red flags don't stop you. Now think of a calm and humble person who helps you out and doesn't lie to you and you slowly get to know. If let's say you met them in college, maybe they won't be the first person you'll go to a party with, maybe that'd be the dramatic person. It would take a bit longer to get to know this person, but when you did get to know this person the bond would be much stronger and you'd appreciate it more. We still build bonds, we've built them with brands and are targeted to do so. We can build bonds with a news corporation that proves itself with time to only report truth, to not dramatize if there is no need, to report helpful information, focusing on high-frequency successful people and how they did it or some of their traits to emulate. Are there still a lot of people out there bonding with the dramatic person who leads them to more drama and unrest and nothing authentic and sustainable? Of course, not everyone's matured enough to be able to set boundaries with these people or even notice based on their feelings that the person is a bad influence on them. But, the high-frequency relationships still happen all the time, and in the end the bond should be more lasting. Reddit alone shows you the discord people have with media, the easy hook and grab is starting to look exhausting and disingenuine to people. People used to give news a chance but now it's not taboo anymore to talk shit about how shit the news is, so if a different but better option came about, if it had enough time to, build a bond, with people it would in the end be the more chosen option as it would retain more readers. Would never work. It's all to do with the development of the human brain. In simple terms the part of the brain responsible for self-preservation was developed millions of years ago. As cavemen the news of Ugg getting a new puppy was not as important as the news of tigers killing people in the next cave. The news of beautiful babies was irrelevant if there were rival tribes killing people. Over the course of time our brains developed to assign higher importance to bad news and an entire reward system was built in to reward you for hearing bad news. Think about it for a minute. 99% of the time the news doesn't actually affect our day-to-day -day lives but we give it this special status and view people who don't watch the news internet as uninformed. It's essentially smut to push a button in your head. News corporations know this, you study it in journalism, they exploit this built-in flaw in our brains to make money. Good news channels always fail as they work on a completely different part of the brain and reward system. TLDR cat videos don't push the same button as people dying. Our society is breaking down on every realm because of a simple reason. Our politics are completely broken, and now our politics has invaded every realm of our daily lives. We are watching politics and entertainment merge, justice and politics merge, health and politics merge. This is what makes our society so polarized, the common ground has been ripped from us. Humanity would benefit greatly from a mainstream outlet that actually tells you the news. I'm British and watched a 30-minute segment in the BBC in mid-December about Brexit and the possibility of a no deal. Literally all they did for 30 minutes was interview random people that were worried, talk about the prices of food when they had no idea and all in a somber voice. No mention of why they were struggling to make a deal, what the actual impact of no deal would be, what the government is aiming to achieve. I literally had to go find a YouTube video to explain what is actually going on swiftly went back to never watching the news again. That's basically local news, owned by a few conglomerates, run under increasing budget cuts, incentivized to cut corners. 
The result is a population unable to find grounding in the spectacle. It stops being information and just becomes entertainment. Emo what we need is a population capable of thinking critically about our situation. We're seeing the result of starving the humanities. Not to mention the microaggressions in your essay but this is just ridiculous. There's nothing wrong with wanting an escape from the dystopia we live in for a few but I'm telling you right now, that ignoring the world's problems so you can feed yourself dopamine, isn't the solution. Seeing people pet dogs doesn't change the fact that police brutality exists, for example. I recently took a philosophy course, and the professor talked about how since the media, in the US specifically, is most of the time profit-based, stories are covered in a way that will make them more money. I don't remember the exact psychology behind it, but essentially, people are more likely to check the news when they feel unsettled, panic, or fear. Because of this, our media try to be negative with their coverage, and oftentimes ending a good news and a worry some note intentionally. I see almost no coverage on COVID vaccine distribution progress, and almost everything is about COVID variant, or new found side EEFECT of vaccines. It's a little sickening when you realize that people make money off of the vast majority's fear. I honestly think the issue is that people leave the news and for too long. They say the same five or six things over and over again for hours. If you just turn it on for a few minutes and then come back in a few hours, you're not gonna miss any updates. But people just sit there with the news and watching, listening for hours just hearing the same bad news over and over again. Maybe that's just me though. Every day is good news though? People are oblivious to good news as it's like compound interest. Literally all the major factors of despair, poverty, mortality, etc., have gotten dramatically better for most of humanity in the past century. We just grow used to it and move the goalposts of what's bad versus good news. People don't need binary comparisons they need relative frequency, perspective and judgment on matters. I.e., give climate change denies 10 seconds of airtime and scientists 10 minutes. No it wouldn't. I just simply find that trying to avoid bad news at all, is simply society's way of saying that they don't want to confront it. They want to shy away and only want to hear good news all the time. I find it unacceptable to just brush anything bad under the rug and ignore it. To make bad news go away at all, is to prevent bad things from happening. But apparently, that's just too much effort for society. I would love it if this existed. I can easily fall down an internet rabbit hole watching animal rescue and rehabilitation videos. But the simple truth is, most people wouldn't watch an all good news channel. Not for very long, anyway. See, news used to be three, maybe four times a day, morning, noon, sometimes, early evening, and night. If something important happened, they would interrupt regularly scheduled programming. I remember being annoyed that my after school cartoons weren't on because somebody had shot President Reagan. So, when 24-hour cable news came on the scene, which was pretty much just CNN and CNN2 for several years, they struggled for viewership. Lots of people didn't have cable and it's not easy to find newsworthy stuff for 24 hours a day. The Gulf War gave them a boost, and then came the WTC bombing, 1993, the Waco standoff, 1993, the O.J. Simpson chase, arrest, trial, 1994-1995, the Oklahoma City bombing, 1995, and the Columbine massacre, 1999. Every single one of these events was a huge ratings boost for the 24-hour news channels, and the regular networks pre-empted a lot of their lower-rated regular daytime programming to get a few of those tragedy-hungry eyes for themselves. So, it's really a chicken or the egg scenario. Do we only watch bad news because that's all there is or is bad news all there is because that's all we'll watch? Well, look at other cable channels. Bravo used to show opera, ballet, film theatrical productions, and reruns of BBC and Granada television productions. Now, it's Real Housewives and other reality shows that in both overt and subtle ways are meant to provoke our outrage reflex. At the very least they tickle our schadenfreude bone. A&E had a similar transformation. The Discovery Channel was full of nature and science documentaries. Now it's all ridiculous reality shows that are only tangentially related to nature and science education. 
The History Channel used to be a source for great history documentaries, but now it too is filled with reality shows and flimsy conspiracy theory shows that also feed our outrage addiction. How dare they try to keep this from us? MTV and VH1 used to play music videos all day. Now it's teen moms and viral video shows of people getting head injuries and vomiting. Ellen and Oprah are examples of shows where, goodness, is emphasized, but most other shows that have tried to copy their model have failed, so you may have to chalk that up to them being anomalies. Extreme Makeover Home Edition is another example of a wholesome show, but it's a little divorced from reality, ironically, and still retains elements of the manufactured drama that comes with reality shows. So, yes, humanity probably probably would benefit from a channel that airs only good news, but humanity continues to demonstrate that it doesn't want that. Negative things are a part of life. Positivity is great, but certain things just need to be heard, no matter how bad they are. Amber alerts are not good, but people need to hear them. Possible danger in your area is not good, but you need to hear it. There should be a TV channel that only airs non-political news, unless it is important to your immediate safety. I don't want all good news. I want all news. I want a channel that when there's nothing to report, they switch to a live feed of the earth or educational programming. One thing over the last three days of chaos that has really pissed me off is how every major networks devolves into pundits talking in circles about nothing at all. Just speculation and opinion. This country would be better off if news networks tried to educate people when there was nothing going on. Have documentaries about voting. About fake news. About influence campaigns. About how to spot manipulation. But of course they won't do that. Because news is run for profit. That's called fluff news. It's all small scale, kinda meaningless. What they should broadcast is the upward trend humanity's been on for decades. Almost everything is getting better, everywhere, despite hiccups and pessimism. They could cover a new topic and trend every day and never run out. An appreciation channel for the accomplishments of humanity. Well, the world would be a better place without ads, but there's ads every fucking where nowadays. The problem is not that something is bad so world would be better without it, the problem is money rules the world, so good, bad, it doesn't really matter to them, all that matters is money coming in. Also, specific to news, ignoring problems don't make them magically go away. Most of the time it only makes them get worse. Ironic I to be the one speaking this. I am sad that in America there isn't a regulation that demands news outlets to be neutral and objective like here in Finland. Yes independent writers on newspapers can have an opinion written but they look different from the news articles, it's not perfect here either but it's nice when you aren't getting fed a political agenda while trying to get the news. You're half right. If a baby falls in a well 1000 miles away, I don't need to know that. It has no practical effect on my life, and doesn't represent a significant social problem that we need to solve. We should strongly discourage the traditional media version of tragedy porn clickbait. That said, some sort of burying one's head in the sand bullshit channel would create a literal mountain of corpses. Every single day without economic reform, environmental reform, health reform, etc. kills innocent people. It's your duty as a citizen to be informed and to work to fix those problems. Or for news outlets not allowed to donate to political parties. Therefore even when bad news comes out it's as impartial as possible. This goes for both sides so for those Dems who thinks I'm saying, MSM fake news, hold off please. There's plenty right-wing news outlets who do the exact same thing as left-leaning news outlets, stretch and alter the truth into their agenda. One thing they all have in common is the lobbying and donations to certain politicians. In some countries this is called propaganda. But there's a trick to it, because good news is inherently not just boring but also likely to incite envy, e.g. if your neighbor win the lottery, then the only good news that is producible is news of people in dire situations being saved from such situations, e.g. a blind man was running out of money and was living on tree bark but the community banded together to get him a meal a day. But this is bullshit. Give me tales of murder, horror, distress and I might consider watching the news. I see a lot of both benefits and problems. For one I do think that there are or would be significant mental and emotional benefits to taking some time to focus on something positive. 
the world instead 100% disasters and dirtbags. There truly are people who are out there every day doing good work, helping others, making progress, advancing knowledge and just being and occasionally making others happy. And I do think it would be good for everyone to take some time to shine a spotlight on such things and people. A problem I see is that there are also a lot of things that people need to know that aren't happy or positive in any way. Terrible shit goes on every day and there's some stuff people need to know to keep themselves safe. A lot of the objections I see here focus on this being like an escape preventing people from seeing the dark, dystopian reality. Maybe if this was the only news or the only news someone watched that might be a problem but we literally have dozens of news sources immediately accessible at almost all times, one or two to focus on good things would be that bad. And anyone that dedicated to escapism is going to find a way to do that no matter how much you put in front of them. Same for anyone committed to the viewpoint that the world is an endless pile of shit. Also I don't think it would need to completely ignore all the bad things in the world. But maybe just put the focus more on, these are the things people are doing to help, this is how you can contribute, or, these people deserve credit for their hard work towards this cause. Might not work for every topic, especially more politically decisive ones, but it's something. Thank you for watching. And if you are new, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Don't forget to like, and comment, that will help us continue.